By 1910, Europe was very, very tense. Everyone knows that the Germans and the Austrians stand squarely opposed to the Entente. France is itching to reclaim Alsace, and Germany is feeling the pressure to attack Russia and secure their domination over Eastern Europe, as they feared that before long, Russia would industrialize and become too powerful to stop. Italy is looking in all directions for expansion, while the Ottomans are rarely fearing partition by aggressive neighboring powers. Yet, with all of these tension points, nobody could have predicted the sudden collapse of Austria-Hungary. Within a couple of years, one of Europe's great powers would vanish, completely shaking up the balance of power on the continent. So, what happened? Well, it all started on a fateful night in Budapest, as the Hungarian half of the empire had just held their election. Last time, the party of independence and 48 had won, a party working to separate Hungary further from the Habsburg monarchy. Broadly speaking, this independence party was supported by ethnic Hungarians, while the minorities had voted for the new National Party of Work, which achieved the majority in this election. This loss would shock the Hungarians, and starting from Budapest, in a small pub, a group of drunken men went on to cause a ruckus. Soon, this would escalate, and two days later, Budapest was in open revolt. The Hungarian parliament would have to flee to the west, and attacks against Germans in the city were worsening. When the empire mobilized forces from the Austrian part of the empire and sent them to deal with the revolters, the revolt would only escalate, as other cities started to participate as well. Very soon though, the movement would radicalize. The government had fled, and the opposition didn't dare support the revolution. So instead, the communists would seize the mantle of leadership. Soon, local worker collectives are set up, and an alliance of socialists and communists would give a coherent direction to the uprising, winning Hungarians to their cause by framing it not as a socialist uprising, but an anti-Habsburg uprising. After a couple of months, most of Hungary proper was in revolt, as Habsburg armies began making some headway. But as the Hungarians attempt to solidify control over territories with ethnic minorities, the Habsburgs would make their first crucial mistake. Nobody had expected the Hungarian revolt to last for much longer. Yet then, the Habsburgs would ally themselves with Slovakian nationalists against the Hungarians, using them to push the revolution back. But in the process, they were promised autonomy from Hungary. This made other nationalities consider their position as well. First was the Croatian crown, officially a part of Hungary at this point. They would declare independence and request protection by the Habsburgs. The Hungarians, seeing their kingdom get torn to shreds, further intensified their revolution. Even worse, Croatian autonomy would lead to revolts in Dalmatia and Bosnia, requesting integration into the new Croatian kingdom. By now, Habsburg weakness started arousing the interest of other nations around them. Russia would attempt to make use of the situation to threaten the Austrians, pressing them to let go of Bosnia, a territory they only officially annexed five years ago. Meanwhile, both Italy and Serbia had begun limited mobilizations, clearly intending to make use of the faltering great power. In response to these threats, the German government was getting nervous they very much realized that the destruction of Austria would leave them alone in this world. So, Germany would declare Austria to be off limits to all powers. And soon, German forces began to reinforce the Austrian positions in the west of their empire. Another crucial mistake, as fears of German domination over the empire skyrocketed. I'm sorry for the quick intermission, but by far most of you aren't subscribed. To keep up to date with all the latest releases, consider doing so. Also, if you're enjoying this video, it was done via a viewer poll. If you want to participate in the next one, the link is in the description right now, where you can vote on the collapse of the communist world after the Cold War. Be sure to subscribe to see the results of that. Revolts would further intensify across the Austrian portion of the empire too. After a coup in Zagreb, Croatia would declare their full independence. But even within Austria itself, fears of Germany forcing unification would lead to unrest in the home country. 
it was now official. Every single part of the empire was in near total chaos. But apart from Germany, other nations had so far remained neutral. Until the Croatian parliament, after much debate, offered the crown of the kingdom to an Italian noble. The two nations would remain separate, but Italy now became deeply committed to Croatian independence. They didn't yet dare touch the core Austrian territories, but Italian forces were being moved to Croatia. When established, Italy went further. Austria had mostly lost control over Dalmatia, which would be folded into Croatia. Next up, Italy declared Habsburg control over Bosnia illegal, marching into that territory as well. Within a week, Serbia and Montenegro also joined in, and the King of Italy and the Tsar of Russia would meet to discuss the fate of the region. The southern Slavic portions of the empire had been the first to go. Now of course, Germany and Austria would attempt to sort out the situation, and a push to Zagreb was attempted. But new information was coming to light. France, Italy and Russia had already agreed on paper to partition the Habsburg realm, while the three hoped to gain as much as possible without German intervention, they also very much realized that Germany was in no position to go to war with all three great powers at the same time. So the Italians struck first, creating a land bridge to Croatia and marching into southern Tyrol. Again, Germany wasn't willing to start a war yet, yet they took up serious positions in southern Austria and Slovenia. After this standstill, Italy's new borders were basically confirmed. By now, it had become clear to all that saving the Habsburgs as a respectable power would probably be impossible, and even Germany was considering if attempting to stitch together such a weak empire was even something they wanted to do. High-level meetings between the great powers began to take place, meetings to which the Habsburgs were not invited. Germany attempted a final time to negotiate a restoration to the status quo, even offering minor concessions to try and get Italy on their side, but it was all in vain. The Entente had such an overmight at this point that Germany was powerless. Now luckily, Britain did jump in to diplomatically support the Germans, preventing the complete destruction of the balance of power that might have been possible otherwise. A broad division of the Habsburg realm was agreed to. For a while after the agreement, things remained calm. With the help of Germany, the Habsburgs even seemed to be rebounded. But then, Russia suddenly declared Poland an autonomous kingdom with protected autonomy. This move seemed strange. Until Russia announced their claim on Galicia. Austria requested Germany denounce the Russian action, yet instead Germany pressured the Habsburgs to not resist Russia's invasion. Soon. Poland was expanded into Western Galicia, while Russia directly took the East. As a sign of goodwill, Bukovina would be given to Romania. In Hungary then, Austria had been doing relatively well until Hungary achieved some major victories. Everyone had realized that the Habsburgs wouldn't last much longer, and the stranded imperial armies in Transylvania would declare three new local governments. Officially, they would remain a part of the empire, but in practice, they would operate as new, German-dominated states. Germany announced recognition and protection for these regimes, but it appeared that the surrounding nations didn't care. Romania would invade and seize surrounding territories, and so would Serbia. Other territories would be lost to the Hungarians as well, leaving only three minor Transylvanian states. Germany would send a nobleman to become the king of Transylvania, which would formally merge the three states into a union. This would mark the very first time that Germany fully recognized a Habsburg loss of territory. By now, Wilhelm II was becoming committed to the destruction of the Habsburg realm, believing it his God-given mission to unify Austria with Germany. Germany's influence over the Habsburg Empire was already reaching such a point that this task would be rather simple. The northern Sudetenland was seized first, after which Germany would announce the creation of the Kingdom of Bohemia Moravia, soon expanded to become the Kingdom of Bohemia Slovakia. 
With the full partition of the empire underway, any remaining morale collapsed, allowing Hungary to consolidate control over most of their core territories. With Germany's unification with the Habsburgs seeming inevitable, the people of Vorarlberg would submit a request to join the Swiss Confederation. Switzerland wasn't very enthusiastic, but pressure from France and Italy would force them to accept. Finally, the remnants of the Habsburg Empire, by now only Austria and Slovenia, would continue to be ruled by the family of Habsburg. But, like all the other German princes before them, they would be folded into the larger German Empire. How the mighty have fallen. With that, Europe has been redrawn. On the map, Germany looks a lot more powerful, but has lost their only serious ally, and they are now hopelessly alone in this world. And this at a time when Russia has only strengthened their sphere of influence. Hungary has survived as a communist nation in the middle of Europe, but only because neither Russia nor Germany would allow the other the benefit of tearing down the regime. Still, Germany has achieved another benefit. Russia is looking increasingly powerful and the German alliance weak. This leads to Britain slowly drifting away from the Entente again. Similarly, Italy, which in recent years had turned to the Entente, has their claims on Germany's allies secure and could very well drift away from the French as well. Tuesday, I will release a follow-up to this video, exploring a potential timeline as a result of this mess. For now though, I thank you all for watching. Go down to the description to participate in the next viewer votes, again, where we will partition the communist world after its collapse. Again, be sure to subscribe to see the follow-up to this video, as well as the next viewer vote. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye.